It's going to be another one of those after hours podcasts. Drinking better beer this time though. Howdy folks and welcome to the 15th episode of the Mad Fuzzy Podcast. This is a little old podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn. And I am your sock-obsessed host, Marta, coming to you from Knox, Maine, where I live with my handsome man, his wonderful mom, and our two amazing dogs. If you are new to this podcast, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I am so glad you found me. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. It is really great to chat with you again. Uh, it has been a little bit, but not a huge amount of time for this podcast. But I had plenty of knitting, so I thought I'd sit down and chat with you for a quick second. Um, if you are looking to find me on the internet, you can find me most active on Instagram. I am at Mad Fuzzy over there. And if you wish to email the podcast, go ahead, say hi. It's madfuzzy at gmail.com. And if you wish to join the fun and excitement of our Ravelry group, go ahead and find us under the Ravelry groups tab. We are the Mad Fuzzy podcast group, and we are a sock obsessed bunch of people who currently is having a cow. So if you are interested in joining our cow, it is the pod people cow, and we're using the hashtag pod people, K-A-L. Um, and the idea is that we are going to be helping out our fellow podcasters and spreading the news of podcasters everywhere. Um, so if you are using a pattern, a um, stitch marker, a project bag, a yarn from a podcaster, you can enter into the Cal. It was running, I believe, from February 12th to April 15th. So if you had some works in progress going, you should be able to finish them up and get them in the finished objects thread by April 15th. I will close that thread then and draw prizes. And for the first time, I actually have the prize package here with me. So I will be showing you what you can possibly win and hopefully entice some people who are on the fence about entering to finally get over there and add those finished objects. Just make sure you let me know who the podcaster is and what aspect of your finished object that podcaster's produced item is. So for the prize package, there will of course be a skein of Mad Fuzzy Yarns. Mad Fuzzy Yarns is my yarn company. I design the bases and dye the yarns and I will have a large Mad Fuzzy news update uh, a little bit later in the episode. But if you are super curious and cannot wait, you can find my store Mad Fuzzy over on Etsy. There is a link below in the description bar. So if you are interested in the yarn, stop on by. It is it's a good place to be as well. So it will be a skein of my yarn. It is also going to be this set of five double point needles. These are Blackthorn needles. They are 100% carbon fiber. This is the 2.25 size, I believe that, or 2.50. I'll make sure to put the paperwork with them. So you'll get a set of needles. I am also, from donation, I got a little soap. This is the Ancestral French Soaps. Uh, this is their delicate wool wash. And this is what I use for Mad Fuzzy Yarns exclusively. Uh, they are based, I believe, in Swanville, Maine. And they make all their soaps with 100% organic olive oil. And these soaps are biodegradable, which fantastic for us moving into a house that is going to be running on a gray water pond and not septic. So our soap will biodegrade by, uh, by, by here, there we go, nice. Here's a picture of their tag. So it is lavender scented, but it is not heavily scented. She does use, um, you know, natural oils and natural scents. So mm, it does smell really good but it doesn't leave everything smelling that way. I've used other wool washes before and I just don't like the perfumey smell on my hands when I'm working with it. So 
you'll be getting this and giving it a try. Of course, I'll be sending all their information. They do have a website, um, which is www.ancestralfrenchsoaps.com. And I, if you're a visual person, it's right down there. So check them out. They do a wool wash. They do a fantastic hair soap. I use it on my hair. Um, they also do a really great all-purpose soap, a shaving soap, and a pet soap. So there is a little bit of everything for everyone in your family through Ancestral French Soaps. And if you're the winner of the Pod People Cow, you'll be getting a wool wash of your very own. So that's the prize package. Good luck. There's quite a few entries already, but if you are on the fence, go ahead and enter. If not, just join the group and introduce yourselves. That's always fun. All right, on to the knitting. That was all the administration I have for today. Huzzah! So, I have been a busy, busy little bee knitting away. Um, I think I've gotten more knitting time in the last couple of weeks than I usually do, which has been very exciting. So I'm gonna adjust my glasses here. And uh, I've got a whole parade of half-finished objects. A bunch of half-finished objects, which means next episode will be a huge parade of finished objects, right? That's how that works. So for my first half finished object, I have these gorgeous socks. These were the first installment in uh, Mina Phillips's Wonderlust sock collection. Um, they're the wrestler socks. I, I don't know what it is about that word. I just can't. I'm putting it right here. Yep, that's how you say that. Best of luck. But despite the difficult name to pronounce, or if it's just me and how my tongue works, um, this is a gorgeous sock pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. And I am absolutely in love with my hand dyed yarn here. This is the Preppy Handbook colorway. I do have a skein of that still in the shop. I love this colorway. This is my colorway. This is like my spirit animal colorway. Um, and then I use just a random brown mini skein I had uh, hanging around because I have mad fuzzy mini skeins hanging around. So I realize a lot of people are going to have issues finding contrasting heel cuffs and toes so you know I told you I talk about it in mad fuzzy update but ee, I made sock sets I'm going to be making sock sets for a while because I realized that sometimes you want the yarn to be the same and if nobody else sells East Frisian sock yarn you're not gonna have any in your stash and you don't want a whole skein you don't want to compromise the integrity of a whole skein for heels cuffs and toes so Mad Fuzzy's gonna get you covered. Don't worry. Heel Cuff and Toe Solution is on its way because it looks phenomenal. And this is her, you know, German short row heel with the little mini heel flap adjustment. It fits phenomenally. I have never had a, this sock is 56 stitches, by the way. I've learned my lesson. You know, I've been talking, oh, I always cast on too many for Mad Fuzzy socks. I didn't this time. I didn't. This is 56 stitches which went super quick. And because it was only 56, I was worried about, I was worried about this heel. I, this is brilliant. If you're out there, I doubt you're out there, Nina. This is brilliant. You're a genius. So perfect heel fitting, which is nice. Cute little toe, love this sock, love this pattern. Love it so much. Already this far on the second one. And because I love this yarn so much, I'm going to give you a nice up close and personal look at this stunning pink. And it's got these gorgeous pieces of, of red and the blue. I'm so happy with it. All right, flipping it over for the front view. Not on blockers. This is that gorgeous front pattern. I just love it. It reminds me so much of like the waves on, on a river when it makes a turn like the ripples as it goes over the shallows in the, in the outside of the turn. I don't know. I spent a lot of time on rivers in Montana when I was a kid. So there's that. I absolutely love it. And I've just been cruising away on it. I've got the pattern memorized. It's super intuitive once you do it. Um, I highly recommend that whole pattern club. Um, I'll be casting on the March sock here very soon. So moving through that. Um, next thing I want to show you is uh, probably the greatest thing I have ever knit. I, I think this is the most complicated, most trying, most uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it's really pushed me as an, as a knitter to follow the pattern. I'm really happy with myself. And yes, there are mistakes, but there'll probably be less mistakes on the next one. And I have the yarn for the next two already. So there'll probably be less mistakes on those, but here they are. My transcendent socks. I'm going to zoom this back here. I am so freaking happy with these. This heel is huge. This sock is huge because it's color work. There's no give. There's 72 stitch socks. So this heel is perfectly sized. This color work here around, sorry, I've not woven in the ends, obviously, um, around the bridge of your foot holds the sock on beautifully. I started to really understand yarn tension and dominance and where my yarn was on my finger because I let them kind of cross and I didn't keep one on one side and one on the other side for the entirety of this sock and really about here I started really paying attention and I really can notice my growth as a knitter as I go up this cuff and then into this wonderful flower pattern at the top. Um, I did this twisted cast off that I had found on the internet. I didn't want to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off, or is it Judy? One of them. The J ladies of magic cast ons and offs. Um, I didn't want to do it because I didn't want this to happen where it fans out. I figured 72 stitch sock, this isn't color work, this is just ribbing. I wanted it tighter. And uh, let's see if she focuses again here. Focus right here. Anyway, back to the point. And I thought, you know, I'll do a regular cast off. Maybe that'll help. And then I thought, well, why don't I look what's out there? And I found this twisted cast off on a YouTube video. I'll post the link to it in the description bar. And it's an interesting looking cast off. It did make things a little bit better. But I think I'm just going to do a standard cast off next time. Because there is another sock. Things that come in twos. So, there it is. My transcendent sock. My most impressive knit to this point. I just need to get the next one cast on. And we'll press on. But, there has been one thing that has a deadline. That I have kind of put the other stuff on hold to sort of crank through. So I can be sure to get it to said person by said deadline. Why do we do this to ourselves? Well, I'm going to show you the bag it's in first because it's a new bag. It's new to me. So this wonderful bag. Isn't that cute? Was made to me by um, a very old and dear family friend. She's kind of like my second mom. She taught me how to sew. Um, I grew up with her and her son and her husband. And I had asked for a project bag for Christmas because she did teach me how to sew. She's a wonderful sewist. Um, and I sent her some pattern ideas, you know, different blogs that had a pattern she could use. And, you know, she's, she kind of makes what she wants, like most of us does. And uh, she, three months later, sent me this beautiful project bag. And it is the perfect size for what's in it, um, which is my Selbu mitts. And so it holds those two skeins beautifully. She's embroidered these little hearts on it. This is one pocket here. This is another pocket here. And then there's another pocket on the back. And it, it feels like, um, like it's recycled bed sheets, which I think is fun. Uh, it's really nicely lined, so it's very soft cotton. Um, it's double layered, I don't think it's interfaced, so it folds nicely. I've been folding it over like this, so that, oh, I'm caught up in my mic cord. <laughs> so that I can kind of just reach inside and enjoy it. But I love it. I think it's one of my new favorite project bags. The one that Heath gave me for Christmas, the mushroom one is currently MIA. I left it and the project at the bar on Sunday night, which I'll tell you more about after I talk about these mittens. But this may be a very, very close tie um, just because it, it's made with love. Every stitch, there's a little bit of love in it. But speaking of love in every stitch, here they are. Enough lead up. I have gotten so freaking far. My Selbu mitts. Oh my god, I love knitting in DK. They went so fast. I would just like here, 
And then I just spent like two hours sitting and knitting. And all of a sudden I was here and there was all this pattern. And I love, I love color work patterns like this. It was brilliant. Like I, I put the, the post-it notes down and, you know, I'd watch the magic bouncing ball, black dot, white dot, black dot, white dot. And I get to the end and like a tight mark, zhing, back to the beginning, thing up. And before I knew it, I had this amazing mitten. And this is my hand dyed yarn. This is my handmade, well, it's not really handmade. This is my mad fuzzy engineered and designed DK weight. This is the old world DK. Uh, it is a BFL Dorset cross sheep that gave their fleeces for this. Uh, it is a round and gorgeous three ply. I'd say it is next to skin soft, but it is a little bit more rustic than your merinos or a traditional BFL. Um, in the double knitting of, uh, of color work, it's created a gorgeous mitten. I am so in love with this yarn. I know it is my own yarn, but I don't think I could have bought a more perfect yarn for this project. So I do have some up in the shop, um, and you can pick if you would like black and white, just like me. So, or I have a bunch of other colors, pretty much standard colors. So if you would like to select two separate ones, if you had something in mind, I do have it. And as, as someone who's been knitting with it, I think it is absolutely glorious. And look at this. And I am a terrible color work knitter. I can't wait to block these. Just, oh. oh. I'm so happy. Speaking of Elio Skane Deer, I'm jumping around here because I am absolutely obsessed with Elio Skane Deer knits. I don't know who isn't but she just released a whole color work sock pattern collection and they're gorgeous and wonderful and i have them all in my cart and she's doing a coupon code for 20 percent off and it's all the socks and uh if you want other things like her selbu socks they're 20 percent off too with the same code so i may have put all those in my cart I will be knitting a lot of skein deer patterns. I should just, I should just change the name of this podcast to, and she knit every skein deer pattern. I might try. I might be a goal, like a life goal, to knit every skein deer knits pattern. Maybe. Oh, when this cow is over, why don't we do a skein deer knits cow? What do you think? Let me know. Yay or nay? A whole cow dedicated to skein deer knits. I mean, I. I I wouldn't get bored, she has so much. Anyway, yes, so that maybe is my evil plan. After we get done with this cow for the pod people, um, let's do a skein deer knits cow. And, uh, and then I can take care of that desire to knit 11 bazillion pairs of cell blue mittens, um, which would work great to go into her mitten along. Because while we're on the topic of skein deer knits, she's got a mid along happening. I just have to make uh, six pairs of colorwork mittens before the end of the year. I think I could do it, and we'll enter in that. Turn on. Wow. Enough about Ellie of Skein Deer Knits. Well, can we ever say enough about Ellie of Skein Deer Knits? Amazing. It's my project. Oh wait. Okay. One more. Th one more thing about Ellie of Skein Deer Knits. I you should have started a drinking game already about about this. Every time I say skein deer knits, drink. I'll start it. All right, one more thing. So she uh, has quite a bad episode backlog and I was feeling kind of like there wasn't anything in my feed. I was in the creamery. We had maple sugar days. Um, this weekend we had two booths going at two separate sugar houses selling tons of cream cheese and it was on me to produce way more cream cheese than I normally do and to maple flavor everything. So I was in the creamery a lot and I had watched a lot of episodes of everything and was kind of out. So I decided because I love Ellie of Skein Deer Nets so much that I was going to start her episodes completely over again, and I highly encourage it. Um, knowing what comes in the future with her as a designer 
and as a podcaster, it's really, really fun to watch her in the beginning and be like, don't worry, Ellie, you're, you're going to make it. You're going to be a huge star. Everyone's going to be knitting your stuff. Um, and she's always so humble, even from the beginning. And yeah, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite podcasters. So if you haven't started over, I recommend binge watching Ellie of Skane Deer Knits. Do it. And then buy all of her patterns and let's knit all of the Ellie of Skane Deer Knits things. I'm gonna, I'll, I can't keep doing this or this is gonna be the longest episode ever. Uh, and we'll have an Ellie of Skane Deer Knits along. All right, I'll do that one. All right, but that's enough about that. Let's keep this episode going. I don't wanna spend a million years editing it. Um, I have mittens to finish, people. So, last work in progress, which was also a hoe. That makes three of them. Um, I lost it. I left it at the bar. It was a tiny little bag, fell out of my bag. Luckily, I know everyone at that bar because I happened to work at that bar. And so they grabbed it on up for me knowing I was the only sock knitter at that bar um, and held on to it and I will get that back. And you'll be seeing probably a finished object on the next episode because it was a half finished object and I had gotten to the heel flap on the next one. So, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. So, moving on to, let's do some Mad Fuzzy news. Let's talk about Mad Fuzzy. Exciting things are happening for Mad Fuzzy. Uh, we are going to have our first event coming up here on April 22nd. I will be in Whitefield, Maine at the Fuzzy Utter Creamery doing Kid Hugging Day. And I'll have a little table and I'll be selling my yarn that was, you know, came off of the fleeces or the sheep that are actually at that farm. So if you are in the Maine area or interested in coming to Whitefield, Maine, I believe it goes from 11 to 4 p.m. And yeah, there will be kids out, there will be lambs out, and you, the general public, will be highly encouraged to hug, touch, pick up, love on all these baby animals. And I will be there selling wool. That's exciting news for us. Another thing is that my local yarn store, um, sure, my local yarn store is uh, moving upstairs into a much larger space. And as a result is going to beef up her made in main section, which I am a part of. Um, and so she is going to do a big grand opening and launch party sometime in May or June, in which I have been invited to vend at as well. So I will be um, out and about a little bit this spring. And I'll let you know more about that whole launch party slash trunk show then. But I do hope to see you if you are in the area at Kid Hugging Day at Fuzzy Utter Creamery. Um, yeah, so those are the upcoming events. As for my actual shop, I will be doing an update this Friday which would be, uh, let's see, I'm looking at a calendar here because I have no idea what date it is even today. So it'll be coming up this upcoming Friday. That'll be March 30th. Um, and it will be a 8 p.m. update. So March 30th, Friday, March 30th at 8 p.m., there will be an update and that it's Eastern Standard Time. So if you are in the Midwest, it will be seven. If you are in Mountain Time, it will be six. And if you are my homies on the West Coast, um, you will be six o'clock. No, you will be five o'clock. It's three hours. Anyway, unless you're in Arizona and you don't believe in time zones. It gets confusing. Google it if you are. I'm already confused. But Friday, March 30th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mad Fuzzy Update. What will be in this update? I hear you cry, yes. Let's go over it. Um, currently in the shop though, I still have Paris Nights. Definitely still have Paris Nights. I have a skein of Preppy Handbook which is what I'm working with right now and loving. I have Wetter is Better, which is this gorgeous blue. 
I have riverbed. And I have servant. So that's what I have from last time's up, up, update that's still in the shop. I am going to warn you right now, I am not going to be having another update before kid hugging day. I am going to be dying everything I possibly can and have for kid hugging day after this. So if you don't get in this update, you're going to have to wait a little bit. I'm going to have the kid hugging day stock first and then um, anything I don't move at kid hugging day, I will put in my update after that. And I will be sure to film an episode letting you know all about how kid hugging day went and to show you what will be available in the shop. So what I'm trying to say is I am running out of yarn. I have more coming from my mill. Um, I should be picking that up before kid hugging day and getting it all dyed. But this stuff is, it's extremely rare. So I don't get a whole lot done. I maybe do 12 pounds of milling. So once it's gone, it's gone. Um, yeah. Anyway, back to what's going to be new this week. I have re-dyed, because it was so popular, pricked her finger. And I still have a villainous in the shop as well. So if you want to do that set of pricked her finger and villainous, I will have two skeins of villainous, or two skeins of pricked her finger um, up in the shop. I have also re-dyed Glacier Lake, which will be up in the shop. I have re-dyed my Romanian friend. If you don't remember, my finished object from last week was a pair of these socks. I re-dyed it by popular demand. So if you were looking to get one of these, they went pretty, pretty quick last time. Um, yeah, I have a few of those going up into the shop. Not many, but a few. Um, and then I have two of a very new and exciting product that I'm hoping to have. I had hinted at it earlier, but I will have these two sock sets. And this is the bread basket sock set um, inspired by the Ukrainian flag um, and the beautiful, beautiful, wonderful land of Ukraine. I spent some time there when I was in high school and I love it there. And when I saw this blue and this yellow together, it just screamed at me. So I have one with um, the blue heel, which is on the pretty tough base, which is the 20% um, Firestar nylon. Uh, so it has that nice sparkle and then the yellow one with the yellow heel is on the pure fuzzy base Which is 100% East Frisian yarn. So I have two of those going up in the shop. Not much I have tiny tiny dye operation um, Only limited by my space and the availability of my yarn and the scarcity of my time. So Get them while you can those are those and that's what's going to be up in my shop very exciting i hope you'll be there friday march 30th at 8 p.m eastern standard time and i hope you take home one of those um last few skeins for a little while unless you plan on seeing me in whitefield on the 22nd of april so that brings me to the end of the actual yarny content I actually have a book review, well, two book review, um, which is going to make this a little bit longer of an episode. I already see that I'm coming up on that 30 minute mark. So I know my camera shuts off. I'm gonna turn it off intentionally this time and we'll talk about some books I purchased. So I am a huge fan of buying used books on Amazon and I picked up both of these books for about $5 plus maybe $4 shipping which I thought was pretty good. Uh, the first book that I got was um, this wonderful book by Interweave, um, Around the World in Knitted Socks. And I found a lot of really good patterns in this book. Um, they have not only uh, you know, texture socks versus colorwork socks. So that one is supposedly from Germany. I've dog-eared some of these that I think are just gorgeous. Um, this is Fresh Breeze, Denmark. Let's see. 
here. By the fjords, Norway. And this one's really fun because this toe right here, I'm gonna turn the page and I put post-it notes over. Look at how that toe construction happens. I love it, I wanna try it so bad. Let's see here, just got a few more. Latvia, delicious. Look at that gorgeous Latvian braid up at the top. I just can't, I can't believe I got this book for five bucks. It's probably like a hundred dollars worth of knitted patterns here. Latvia, or no, I'm sorry, Estonia. Let's see, a little more. Then they have these nice kind of just knit. This one is supposed to be um, England. It's got gorgeous sample stitches all throughout it. They actually call it Knit Sampler. And the last one for this book is the one for the United States, which I think is so fun. Um, these are called the Route 66 socks, and they are so fun. And I know after doing the Transcendent socks that it's just a matter of following along the chart. So that's the first one I, I got. So that is Around the World in Knit Socks by Stephanie van der Linden. There it is down there. Um, I got a $5 on Amazon because it was damaged, but I don't care about that. And the next book I got, it's not as, you know, I must knit the, every pattern in it. It's hardcover. So this is the other one. I got Knitted Socks from Around the World. It's hardcover. It's a gorgeous book, also used. Um, but a lot of the book, a lot of the socks in it are a heavier weight sock. Um, it's either a sport weight or a DK or some worsted. So that didn't really appeal to me. But they have some things that I, I don't think I could find very many places elsewhere, like these gorgeous um, kilt socks. Really would be interested in making a pair of these. Um, Estonian socks, I just can't stop. Like these look really very doable for me. The photography is fantastic in both of these books. The patterns are really easily read. Um, they look really straightforward, usually condensed to one or two pages. So you're not flipping back and forth constantly. You're looking at the chart on one side and then the instructions on the other. But look at these Bosnian slivers. Yeah. So both books, lots of fun, um, with the addition of the skein deer knits. Ah, darn it. With the addition of the skein deer knits patterns, I uh, I'm going to be a very busy lady with all the color work socks. Yay! So, um, yeah, that brings me to the end of my knitted content and my knitty content. So if you are just around for that. Um, thanks for stopping by. If you liked this episode or any of my other episodes, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you enjoyed this one especially, hit that little thumbs up button. And uh, yeah, let me know you liked it as well as uh, share it across the internet. Let people know about the Mad Fuzzy podcast and we'll continue to grow this wonderful community. So thank you again and I'll talk to you soon. But if you're sticking around, this is a good life update. This last couple of weeks have really been something. Lots of ups, lots of downs. So earlier in the week, uh, my beloved white dog, uh, she's our white shepherd. She had this weird swelling around her ear. And we thought, you know, if it doesn't go down, we'll take her to the vet. And the swelling goes away. But then the swelling becomes limping. And limping within 24 hours becomes complete lameness. And she will not stand on her paws. She will not move. She will not eat. She will not go to the bathroom. And we just, we take her to our vet. She goes in, gets in, has a fever of 105 degrees. Um, and they run tests and they find out she not only has Lyme disease, but she has anaplasmosis, which they've been seeing a lot of dogs getting recently, which is another bloodborne tick illness that attacks the white blood cells um, and we brought her home with that diagnosis and a whole bunch of anti antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories and we mixed in some yogurt in her food and after two treatments she's 
becoming herself again. She's not 100%. Um, I've set up this heated blanket on the floor over here for her, and she's just hanging out on the heated blanket. She's, you know, in real low energy still. We took them all for a ride today. We went and dropped off our truck to get inspected because we have inspections here in Maine. And uh, we took the dogs along so that they could enjoy the sunshine and a couple hours in the car. And we really didn't want to be apart from our dogs for more than a couple hours for no apparent reason. So we brought them and she wasn't her usual self in the car. She wasn't too interested in sticking her head out the window like she usually is. But she's definitely much better than she was because she was not moving at all. At least now she's walking around by herself and drinking water and going to the bathroom and just not 100% white dog and at the moment, but is on the mend, thank goodness. So that was a little scary for us. We were extremely stressed out about her and I'm so glad she's doing so much better because she's my fur baby. So that happened and uh, yeah, that was, that was the big news. That was a lot of, of what had gone on in our life. Um, we had some friends over last night to play Mario Kart. I never play video games, so it's kind of a treat when I get to. Um, I, as I said, it was Maple Sugar Days um, this last weekend, so we were busy making bacon maple cheese balls, which were absolutely delicious. Um, and yeah, it's just been a low key kind of a week, just stressing out about my dog. So I hope, uh, I hope all is well with you. I hope all your family is, you know, well and heading into spring and you're getting ready for the warm weather because I sure am. Um, yeah, and Betsy will be home shortly with Chinese food. Heath is working tonight till close at the bar he works at. And so it's going to be me and her and my Salbu mittens and some Chinese food. And yeah. I'm hopefully going to have those finished in time. So fingers crossed. And thanks for sticking with me, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And as always, enjoy your knitting. Bye.